we've been put on the platform of slavery for so long. So I think what the author was trying to do, because this is an African-American Bible, and the, the, the article is basically geared towards black women. So that's why I said it that way. I hope. Um, <laughs> violence is incapable, incompatible with love. Domestic violence, physical, psychological, economical, or sexual is sin. Violent relationships break the greatest commandment. And furthermore, we know that the Holy Spirit neither produces nor condones abuse for love and gentleness are fruits of the Spirit. See Galatians 5.22. In the New Testament, husbands are admonished to love their wives unconditionally and sacrificially. Ephesians 5.25. Do you hear that, gentlemen? You are valuable to God. His sacrifice for you demonstrates that. No matter what you've been told, I just said that, what you have experienced, what mistakes you have made, God loves you and wants you to be loved. He also wants you to take care of your life. That's why he gave it to you. Because it's a stewardship. It has a pacific use. No one has authority. No one has his authority to demean and brutalize you. So back up. No earthly promise can supersede his commands. If you are in a relationship that threatens your mental or physical health, your soul, and your temple, seek guidance and strength from the Spirit as to how to bring your life in accordance with God's will that all his children should prosper and be in health. 3 John, 3 John 2. So that's 3rd John chapter 2. Consult with trained professionals to assist you in adopting a lifestyle that will bring you in compliance with God's command to love yourself. Read John 3, 16, 14, 15. Also read essays on marriage, overcoming abuse, and suffering. And that's pretty much what I read with that um, spiritual warfare and the narcissism spiritual um, abuse. Because when narcs attack you, they're attacking the fact that their emptiness inside is not matching. They're not getting any narc supply off of you worshiping and praising God and living a full life and being happy. They're not concerned with that. They're concerned about me, 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 and I, I, I. So we covered Goliath was boastful against Israel. That's why he was a narcissist. He was a covert narcissist. He was an overt narcissist. He was a bragger. Jezebel was envious of Elijah, so she was a covert narcissist. She was, she was, she was envious in the inside, the stuff you can't see. You know, she'll smile all day all up in your face and then roll her eyes when you walk away or look at you funny or just kind of give you that fifty cent ice grill. Remember when he they was at that party and get rich or die trying, and dude was you know trying to stop that girl from getting high at the party, and then when he kicked them out. He slapped five with the dude that was trying to break it all up. But then after the dude walked away, gave him that funny look. That's envy. Delilah brought Samson down with jealous and thought they were the law. And you know, you've met them. You've seen it on media. How some, um, you know, authorities think they are the law. And they got a right to do whatever they want to and victim and brutalize our people. Whatever, I don't care about the race thing. I'm really not on that right now. This is not a race thing. This is a human race thing. This is a death thing. And death don't give a dog on about color. So just to clear that up for those that's looking for that that drama, I don't do that on my show. So find somewhere else to go with all that. And King Saul was jealous of David. And you already know that story. That story has been played so many times. You can go to any church and hear the story of King Saul and, Je and, and uh, the jealousy between David and how David had to come in and be, even though he was an enemy, he had to come sing to Saul to calm Saul down from killing him. So make sure you look that up when you get time. And Lucer, Lucifer, Satan is the master narcissist. He was so rude, he didn't even want God over him. He wanted to be God and he got his wish, but one day he got to come down just like all the other narcissists and their rise and fall so we we covering that so you are valuable to god his sacrifice for you demonstrates that no matter what you've been told what you have experienced and what mistakes you've made god loves you wants you to be loved he also wants you to take care of your life 
No one has his authority to demean and brutalize you. No earthly promise can supersede his commands. If you are in a relationship that threatens your mental or physical health, seek guidance and strength from the Spirit as to how to bring your life in accordance with God's will, that all his children should prosper and be in health, and consult with trained professionals to assist you in adopting a lifestyle that will bring you in compliance with God's command to love yourself. And you have to be careful on that too. Let's see, do I got anything else before I go through quote for the day? Let's see. Got Romans. I love this Bible because it breaks so much stuff down. Like, okay, then we got a uh, second Corinthians. Um, this one says, with painful, difficult, and often rambling arguments, the Apostle Paul struggles to reestablish himself. As an ambassador and the official agent for Jesus Christ who came and brought him and brought them the word of truth. Our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. 6, 11 through 12. He exhorts them not to heed the counsel of those who challenge his authority and uses chapter 10 to defend himself. Not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand, 1016. He charges those causing the divisions with being false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, 1113, and which is going on right now, and says, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light. That's why narcissists are cold at what they do, because they are so charming. They are so fun to be around. And the person that really knows them is trying to tell you something about them. I think we need to wake up and pay attention to that person that's trying to tell us about this certain person. Have you ever had like a, a person in your life that you really like? They was fun to be around and this person just egging you on about them? Ah, oh, don't don't mess with them. They're kind of like, well, in society, we always getting taught like how to hate on each other and talk about one another. But if it's a family member or a friend have known this person over X amount of years and, you know, they really got, they really pull you to the side. They're not trying to embarrass them because they know about narcissism. So they're not going to come at you like that. They're going to come at you. For example, my child's dad, sister, before me and him started dating, came up to me and said some things that wasn't very pleasant to hear based on the fact that I had just met him and I was working at the daycare that her kids went to at the time so I took care of her kids on second shift but she ended up finding out that her brother liked me okay and she decided out of the blue and it was weird because I was um on break you know what I'm saying I was outside finna go get some lunch and you know smoke me a cigarette come back and she said um can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure. What's up? And she goes, um, I'm, I see your, my brother digging you and all of that. And I ain't trying to be no hater. I ain't that type of sister or nothing, but you need to watch how close you get to him. And I didn't know at the time that they didn't have a good relationship between each other. So I had nothing to go on. So I'm probably like, okay, maybe they don't get along. She don't want him to have nobody in his life. You know how that go. When you like somebody and you trying to get it hooked up and you don't, the last thing you want to hear is something bad about somebody you like. Okay. That's the trick. You know what I'm saying? That'll have you not paying attention to what's really going on with that person. And everything that she told me at the time to me that seemed negative to me, it was like, man, she really ain't got nothing good to say about her own brother because I'm family oriented. I'm not going to put my brother, my sibling stuff in the street. I'd rather go to them face to face and say, hey, man, this is crazy. This is jacked up. Ooh, ooh. I'm not going to go to their friends and say, you know what? Sis, bro ain't really on, you know, what he really say he on. He ain't really the person you think he is and blah, 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 blah. But it was like, it was so strong to me because she really had to tell me this. And she was like, everybody that he done been with, he got other kids by other women. I, I, I see you got a lot going on for yourself. You seem like a nice lady. I would hate to see anybody like yourself getting hurt by this man. And I'm like, hurt? He, 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 he a trickster. Like, what? So I got hooked up with him. 
And he was a nice guy. Fun to be around. Um, everybody liked him. He seemed accepted by everybody. He was kind of like life of the party, you know, but he was kind of like a sanguine type phlegmatic, you know, he was laid back cool, you know, but he would open up in his own little cute, quiet way. And it seemed like, you know, he would treat me nice in public. I didn't have any problem until I was about eight months pregnant with my baby boy, Jeremiah. And um, my family had through a barbecue, you know, in the backyard. We chilling, we hanging out. And everybody went in the house. And I'm like, we got to talk. And I said, I'm not going to talk to you right now about it because I want to make sure that the family ain't all up in our business because I'm a really private person. I don't like people all in my business. So we talking. And I said, we going to have to, you know, he was working at a car wash. It wasn't like he wasn't working there doing nothing at all. But a jerk is a jerk, and I got to say this. And we shall be delivered by our testimony. But when I told him that you, that he needs to help me, you know, with the baby, and I'm eight months pregnant, the baby's coming, and we have no pampers for him. We didn't have no clothes for him. We didn't have a baby bed for him to lay in. I mean, my baby was just going to really be naked in a blanket. Like, seriously, I hadn't been back to work for like the last six months of my pregnancy because I was high risk and I couldn't work because I kept passing out at, on the job because I was so pregnant. <laughs> okay. And um, I told him we had a discussion, which I thought we was having a discussion pretty much, you know, you don't have to pay child support or something because I'm really not trying to bring my baby home with nothing. Next thing I know, I was on the floor and he squeezed my jawline so hard. I'm surprised he didn't break my jaw. But he fractured two of my tooth in the back. At the bottom row of my tooth. And he just started just choking me. And I, mind you, I'm eight months pregnant. So when you tell a narc about himself, ladies, be careful. Do it silently and move quickly. Because if you sit them down and try to tell them about themselves, they're going to lash out. And it might be a dangerous situation. And you almost might get yourself killed. And I'm saying this for experience. If you're going to leave, leave. Don't try to explain yourself. Once you start seeing the traits and the, and the, and the, and the um, different things. And stuff that they do and stuff and say to you. And make it seem like they're abusive to you. It's time to walk away. It ain't no explaining. Ain't none of that going on. So the moral of the story is I moved out. I didn't tell my family where I was. I didn't explain it to my siblings I was living with. I didn't even tell my own mom. I didn't, I didn't, I just had the baby. Packed up, got my purse, my keys, and I left. And I stayed gone for three and a half years. And then that's when I discovered the magazine business. And you already know the story of that. I, and you know, in my former shows, I've, I've talked about that. But that's the reason why I left. Because I was with a narcissist, abusive child's dad that, you know, couldn't accept responsibility. And narcs hate to accept responsibility. Jackie says, my ex-husband was a narc now that I know the signs. Right. Um, And that's, the, that's what makes it dangerous. You don't know. And then when you don't know, you don't know what to do. And you kill, you almost get yourself killed because you don't know. And I'm sorry. I'm tired of suffering from stuff that I don't know. So I left. I got out. God delivered me, moved me around. I'm talking about I didn't even think about Milwaukee for three years. Got myself together. Learned to trade a sales. Came home. Everything was safe. And that's what I love about being in tune with God. He was there every day with me. I was safe. I ate every day. I had money every day. It was like a whole new life. And then I came back with a whole new mindset because I was around people that was getting their lives together. I seen men marry their baby's mothers and take care of them and the baby. You know, so it gave me a different mindset that not all men are dogs. Not all men are narcissists. You know, it's really men out there that really love their wives and their children. And they just want to be the best at it. But I wasn't around that. So I had no idea that 
people actually live like that. I thought that was just some stuff they saw on TV because where I come from is nothing but oppressed 